Welcome to High Style Sundays. You know what's going on. We down here in Dream Factory exclusive lounge and studios. We got LaBoca on deck. And you know we got a special guest. We got Spud McKenzie here. What's going man. on? What's going on? What's going on, my guy? Man, a long time coming, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, happy to be here. Of course, of course. Now, for everybody that doesn't know what you're about and what you do, let them know. Well, I mean, I'm an all-around creative, director, photographer. Um... A happy soul <laughs> and um god's favorite next to one more person I like that. Okay. <laughs> now you're from baltimore Maryland, right? originally yeah okay. so what was it like growing up for you in baltimore uh shit. growing up in baltimore was like anybody else that's from here um it's tough it was a lot of crab in the barrel mentality but on the hindsight it was a lot of art and uh, good feeling to it we are uh, well, I grew up at I grew up in Forest Park, so if, if you're familiar with like the Dickey Hill area, that's where I grew up at. Um, most of my family members grew up around like the Heights and York Road, so of course on the weekends we'll go visit them on 43rd. I remember I got um, got into a lot of a lot of fist fights growing up. The the division of those neighborhoods was so stupid. Everywhere from Forest Park to uh, Gwen Oak to Walbrook. Just everything in between was just a lot growing up. Um, knowing Baltimore's mentality at a young age told you about yourself. You had to grow up a little early, if that's the best way to put it. You had to really understand what it means to be a responsible young adult because you didn't have time to be a kid because it was in your face. Um, same as what they would consider the wire, you really had to see what that shit was like if you grew up around it. So, man, but I would say my childhood was fun. Um, I, I don't regret nothing. Not a damn thing. So for me, it actually makes me feel good to say I'm from there. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's a good perspective. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get straight to it. What made you first pick up a camera? Yeah, that shit chose me. Okay. Like, for real, for real. My dad always took pictures in the house of us. He uh he had a red room. Okay. So I used to always know growing up, like, why is there like a red room in the, you know, next to the kitchen? He would take the whole bathroom, remove everything. The tub would be filled with, like, negative film and uh, being me being a bad kid i'll always see the just touch it that black stop doing that as i got older i realized he was taking pictures of us so i didn't know he was developing film growing up so he always had a camera in his hand you know always uh it, it, you couldn't get away from pictures especially with him so i, I would definitely say it shows me in the long in the long run. Yeah. Okay. what when did you know that like like what uh after i left baltimore i say it, it really hit me it really hit me then Why um, you i didn't have any uh <laughs> i didn't have any interest in doing nothing when i was here we're being totally honest i didn't have any exterior skills outside of morgan and that was it that's all i found out like after college but when i left baltimore i picked up a camera and that shit just became like therapy for me it was like a getaway um Everything I'd be stressed about or depressed about, the camera would help me get through it. And for the most part, it kind of like formed me into a different gentleman over the time. I could say if I didn't fall in love with it or get involved with it, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I swear to God. And now, when you left Baltimore, you went to Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the difference for you, you know, that Atlanta vibe and that Baltimore vibe? It's a lot of support down south. Not to take away that Baltimore is thriving now and they're supporting each other now, which I love. I wish we did this a long time ago. I swear. Right, that's right. I swear I do. But I love what it is now. But the vibe is um everybody supports each other. There's no you're not back doing nobody. And um even if you have a small dream, that's gonna be able to be put into play based on how other people see your vision. They're gonna believe in you and that's gonna give you enough motivation to just go ahead and for it. I can say living in Atlanta is like a, a fantasy. It's kind of like in a weird place. Um, you don't, you typically see things like that on movies, but when you actually go down to Atlanta and work, people are actually behind you. You could be selling t-shirts on the corner right here. They're going to support you. And that's something I ain't never have, you know, being outside of family, so. And now that support, you know, something a lot of creatives, a lot of artists don't get. You know, mm -hmm. So how do you like, because I know with the projects you work on from, you know, all these other, all these bigger names and all that, you get a lot of, you know, me a lot of 
of support to carry those projects. Mm-hmm. So how do you, how do you, how are you able to, you know, stay on that same, on a level mental pace? Like, uh, I guess, like you just said, just keep your pace. Just don't try to worry about what everybody else is doing. Just do your thing and do it at the best ability. Don't just try to like, you know, half-ass it, but also go as hard as you can. Um, I know a lot of people compare, yeah. like talent and art. Amongst others, we, we, we tend to do that here as well. And that's something I had to grow out of. So I always compare myself to somebody else back in the city. And I never wanted to do that. When I got out there, it was just like, no, nah, you got your own lane. Go and fuck with that. And you should be fine. But down there, they, they discipline your mental on what you really want versus distractions, if that makes sense. Yeah. And now, a lot of people see you working with like different big name artists, big name labels, big mm-hmm. companies. How did you even, like, what was your first actual, you know, major uh, project that you worked on? And when did you, like, what made it major to you? My first major project? I mean, as in, like, an artist or just a company? Oh. My first major, I would just say influencer, I'm not even going to say artist, was uh, DC on Fly. Okay. When I first moved to Atlanta, um, my homegirl, Melita, she went to Morgan State, no, she went to Milford, excuse me. Then she went down CAU, excuse me. She uh, introduced me to a, a good friend of hers named DeRod, which was his manager at the time. From there, he pretty much uh, told me to meet DC on Fly, and then it was literally like a wrap from there. I never traveled with an artist in my life until I got around him. My first major city was Louisiana. Um, it was, what is it, an eight-hour drive on a on the Tahoe with him and five other artists. Yeah, one of them y'all know is uh, Emmanuel Hudson. Okay, yeah, yeah he, was, he was doing their little comedic runs with him. And uh, we was moving around swiftly in the southern regions, like all the little hick towns, if you would say. I ain't never been to the south outside of Charleston. So I'm saying all kind of shit, like <laughs> Confederate flags, people, you know, calling us, you know, N-word and shit. It's crazy. But, you know, traveling with him really opened my eyes to a lot of shit in the world. And I didn't know past the Mason Dixon line. <laughs> All I know is the North. I don't know the South. So traveling with them really opened my eyes up things. But yeah, DC was my very first, very first major artist, if you would say. And how did that, how would you say that impacted your career? <laughs> it opened more doors. I, the doors I didn't even think we even, you can get into. For somebody to come from my city, like I got a call from um, Dej Loaf, manager, not even two months in after seeing all the content I used to do for DC. And she was like, Dave said, can you come to the studio at Tree Sound? That's located in Atlanta. I went up there, met her, kicked it. At the time, Dirk was there and they were dating. So Dirk was there. That's how I met Dirk and Jason, all the family in OTF. And from there, Dave kind of put me up through there. I'll give her that. Between DC and Dave, they put me up through there. And one of your one of your, I want to say, what people like, uh, one of your projects that a lot of people like and talk about still is when you work with Jeezy. Yeah. So explain that to us, because first of all, that little clip that you posted, that shit was great. That Thank was, you. That was great. Thank so you. explain the, the creative process behind that and how you were able to put it together. With Jeezy, uh, you know, growing up in Baltimore, we love Jeezy. We love Boosie. We love Gotti. We love Gucci. We love them all, but uh, one of the things that stuck with me is I, I, I love gangster girls. So Jeezy had me on a lot with his tapes. So to listen to his shit growing up, I always had like creative ideas. You know how you just imagine shit when you get older. And then of course when you meet the person, it's like that shit just come into play. So uh, with Jeezy, it was like, I noticed his momentum was like not as influential as it was now with these new kids. So. His music is all timeless for me. And I wanted to bring some of the art that he was putting into his music back on this new age of what you consider content, social media. And I just said, let me just be your marketing manager as far as content for the next six months. Just give me six months, that's all I need. We went from literally nothing to putting him back on the charts. Content was being rolled out every day. It was, he was on tour for the last six months, literally. We'll film, go to a show, Wake up next day, I have to have the content to him. I'm on the plane editing, send it back out. Vlogs picking it back up. Jeezy's back in motion now. Now he's hungry again. He sees the attention. 
So I'm trying to tell him, pitching him, like, listen, we have to continue this kind of momentum so we can keep going. So it went from Legends of the Street tour to his own personal tours and putting out content about his personal life, you know, him with his wife and everything. I, it was just like a nonstop thing. Like, these six months felt like two weeks to me. Pushing out creative content with him was probably one of the most craziest thing ever because I didn't think it would come to this point. Like, these are people you listen to as kids, yo, and you work with them. That's something you don't see every day. But, um... Yeah, I just, I'm just happy we got the rollout Snowfall. One of the hardest mixtapes that came out last year, especially being as a gangster girl. So, and for me to be behind that, I, I feel amazing. Like that, that's something I never thought I would. I'm not a, I'm not an A&R. I'm a director, I'm a creator, but I felt like an A&R at that moment because I really put this in play along with, you know, my friend Trey, Maisha, Z, and Rach. It was definitely something I, I, I will never forget though. It was beautiful. And also, I want to talk about the um, one of the few. Let me correct this. You're the first uh, created uh, content uh, film director, however you want to put it. It's that DJ drama. Yeah. Nobody's got one. Explain why that was so important. John would tell you. <laughs> John would tell you. He know he my favorite mixtape DJ. Like I grew up on dedication. I grew up on all the tapes with Cannon. Like, that's all I knew. We all grew up on, uh, what's it called? Bad Shed Line Wire. It's, it's been a, <laughs> you know what it is. You burn CDs, you feel me? You outside, like, running to the, the local CD man in the trunk, trying to get the new gangster girls. Like, that was a thing growing up for us, you feel me? So, again, being as OGZ was in that same realm, as well as other artists I used to grow up and listen to, seeing that, and then seeing one of my favorite DJs, my hosting DJs, that start there, making mainstream noise, and you underground, Oh, man, I said I gotta get a tag from him one day. So my drum, like like I said, he I had that. That's just a personal relationship. Like that's my boy. So that we really cool as hell. You know, I look at him like a cousin because you know he's from Philly anyway. So we really right there. We look at Philadelphia like they are cousins anyway. So we always be joking and talking shit about each other. You know, but yeah, that's that's that was necessary. I needed that from him. That's tough. That's different. I like that. And now for the younger. You know, You know, how can they take their craft to the next level? Because you're over here, you know, you're putting treatments together. You're not just in the hood doing a shoot. There's an idea behind it. So how can they take it to the next level? Study what you're being looked up to as far as, like, if you have an idol, study your idol. Do more than what your idol did. And then that'll put you in a place and want to get be hungry for more. I study a lot of people. A lot of people don't know. I even study people that aren't even mainstream. I study the upcoming people in Baltimore as well. Like I study that kid with Clay Stacks. I study Maggie. I study Stars. I study Chucky. I study all of them. They don't even know that. But I take from that and just go from there. Like I don't want to stop at just my idols. I want to study everything just so I don't ever miss a beat. So I want to keep going. But for the young kids, I would definitely say study the idols and stay in the lane. Don't outgrow yourself trying to like be someone else, basically. Don't be like, I want to be like this artist. I want to be like this camera. I want to be like this director. Just take elements from them and apply it to your own skill. I promise you, it'll go crazy. It'll excel on its own self. You can't lose. It's too easy. And on the business end of this, mm -hmm. how do you, how can they like expand their, you know, their market, marketability? How can they get more clientele? They got to study business adequate first. Okay. Know what it means to build a relationship. Everything's not about a dollar. Keep the relationship, the money will be there. It's that easy. Most of these relationships I built with them, there was no money involved. I didn't get paid with DC until probably four months in, y'all. I was living out my savings, traveling with this man. I didn't get paid. It was like an internship, you get me? Yeah. It's nothing wrong with being a janitor to, to be a CEO, you yeah. feel me? Understand that method and you always gonna be okay. It's easy, bro. And now, did you, like, would you say you would see yourself here, like, as a kid in Baltimore? You were still, you know, that young kid in Baltimore. Mm. Did you see yourself in this position? Not even. Why? I had too many uh, bad influences in a way. So it took me to be out of that understanding to really see what it is to live. And I could say that, that if I still was that kid in Baltimore, 
I don't even think I'll be close to where I'm thinking at right now. I think I would be somewhere else. Don't know where though. I just don't know. It wouldn't be it. But to come back here and remind myself, it's just enough for me to be like I'm I'm blessed and I appreciate it. And what's that what's that clarity like? So blissful, yeah. Like <laughs> it, it it's calming. You know, it uh it kinda brings a tear to y'all a little bit. You know, like Roddy said, like and don't quote me, but he was just like, you know, you're always thinking about being in the, you know what I'm saying, jewelry, brand new car and all that shit. It, a tear comes to your eye when you're actually doing it. And when Roddy said that, I felt that. Like, that's understandable. Like, because you don't think that when, you, when you're when here. But when you're actually doing it, it feels different. And he was like, okay, there's more, much to live for. I'm not saying materialistic value evil, just doing this shit. Because we don't, we don't get to see this every day. This is not the city to... We we'll have a platform for that, and I and I will hope we can change that. I hope we so can change the platform. Try. Yeah, that shit is real, bro. Like for real. And now, besides the content creating, mm -hmm. besides the you know filming, what else can get you doing? You got any businesses? Anything you should know? About? Businesses definitely starting an agency. So basically, what I just did for Jeezy, I want to do that for more artists. So we're starting an agency this year where we're going to start doing one on ones where we take young creatives, young directors, young photographers, and we apply them to the artists. We let them create the content for them and get paid for it. You know, grow their own business in their own sense, but the agency relies on finding fresh new talent and putting them one-on-one -on -one with the artists and growing with the artists, whether it's a rap artist, whether it's a fashion stylist, whether it's a DJ or a producer, whoever, whomever. We want to make sure that we, you know, we put that out there. So. My job with the agency is to reach out to young photographers and young directors and pretty much have them go out and tour. And we just, you know, go from there. Creative agency is definitely needed in this world because we got a lot of model agencies, got a lot of rap agencies, labels and shit. Labels reach out to young creators all the time. Why not just start the agency? So that's what we're going for right now. Other than that, touring. Again, I'm going back on tour again this year. I love touring. Um, how many tours have you done so far? Oh, shit. I like 20 tours in the past six yeah. years. Yeah, like a top three, top five. Top maybe. three for sure. Oh, what? Top three. Wiz and Snoop, I smoked the most weed in my life. That's why I don't want to smoke no more. Like, it, I'm burnt out on that. I'm good on that. Um, of course, Legends of the Street Tour with Drama and Jeezy and everybody. And I had to say Rico Nasty Tour. That tour was everything. Like, I got to beat people up in the crowd. Like, mosh pit is a real thing. Like, people really fight, and they not going, you can't get in trouble for that. You know how much anger built up on tour? Imagine just riding around for three days. You can't take a shower. What? I'm fighting somebody when I get off this bus. Like, I nah, I love that tour. Rico, that's my girl, man. I'm trying to tell y'all. That's one of the best tours. I say she's top, the top two tours outside of Snoopy Wars. I'll give you that one. And now you did end the year last year. Mm-hmm. Rico Nasty. Yeah. So now, how was that, you know, coming back in the area, you know, putting something together with a local uh, DC? You know, growing up, we didn't really fuck with DC like that. Yeah, right. So now it feels kind of good for us to kind of connect that bridge. Yeah. Shout out to my boy, Light Show. Um, I like that. I, I like it a lot, actually. That means there's, still, there's some growth in the DMV and Baltimore. I'm not going to put Baltimore in the DMV because that's never the case. It's two different places. Right. We are our own state even though we're a city. But anyway, I love it. Um, Cause it's, it's, that means there's chances for like another new entity to come in and play and just, you know, fuck up the game. We're just showcasing it right now. We don't know these next 10 years, these new kids is about to really turn the city differently. And they're seeing the platform. They about to go and excel. So hopefully it is a bigger platform in Baltimore. Oh, so. Where, what would you change to take it to that, you know, to make it different? Uh, I would at least change the environment we're in right now. Maryland is just based off of old folks, politicians, tax write-offs, you know, weird shit. We got to find a platform for young people to kind of like be able to excel here. They already closed most of the wrecks, so that kind of killed the creativity there. Hence why I said agency is necessary. We got to start doing more mixers, not popularity mixers where the most popular nigga in the city is coming around talking. We need creatives, 
We need artists to all come together in rooms like this and kick it and talk ideas, do plans, you know, form our ideas and treatments and just go from there. When people see that in certain cities, they get attached to it. For example, Detroit, Texas, Oakland, those type of cities didn't have that kind of platform before up until social media happened. Now people are making their own platforms in their own cities where they don't need everybody else to be involved. People are coming to them. That's why you hear so much people trying to, you know, be diverse with sounding like Detroit artists. They got their own shit up there. Y'all got to go up there to get the sauce. Or y'all go to Texas to get the sauce or so on and so on. So I feel like Maryland needs their own platform and their environment by itself. And I think we'll be fine from there. But nobody's above each other. We all got to start coming together and start being crab in the barrel base. We ain't going to get nowhere like that. Now, what's your ultimate goal? Your whole career, what's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal? Yeah. I just want to have a museum. Why am I shitting there? And so when I'm gone, shit, y'all got something to look at while I'm out of here. For real, I, want, I really want my own museum, for real. Like, at least a gallery at the most. Because museums, it costs a lot of tax, <laughs> tax money. But yeah, definitely my own gallery. Um, I want people to look at this and use this as a reason to go out there and get it you know, from a different world, because back then all we had was rappers to come out the city and show like, it's possible, but we got a lot of different things even in the city, and they're showcased in so many ways. So I want to be able to have a gallery here and then let that shit rock. That's it. And if you can give, like, some, I think you've given a lot of free game, a lot of advice, a lot of, you know, stuff people can use to change their own careers. Mm-hmm. But Knowing like like me and a few of them, uh, camera people out here, and beyond that, there's even smaller people that like have been in rooms with tons of cameramen. I'm like, I did not know this young under twenty cameraman. Yeah, twenty years old. So, what could you tell them? Like, what would be the ultimate advice for them to be able to like keep growing, find new new, new paths, new creativity, new mm-hmm. styles? You know? Well, as I said before, like. Just stay in their own lane and just study everybody. But from your understanding, yeah. I would say networking. Yeah. You know, you bump shoulders with people, you don't know what they got going on. And that can go further. So network to your best abilities. Don't be afraid to talk. You know, don't be shy. Always open your mouth. Like, you know, close mouth, don't get fed, for real. Yeah. So I would definitely say networking. One-on-one is the only way you're going to get in. Trust me, you'd be surprised what you're going to end up with when you talk to them or bump shoulders with now, I know you probably got stuff you can't even tell us about. Yeah. You got any projects we can look forward to seeing? Uh, uh, <laughs> you can't wait, huh? Um, uh, JT, and that's all I'm going to say. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You know, you know, but don't disappoint ever. You know what I'm saying? Man, you got any last shout outs? Anybody you like to, uh, like to say? Nah, I mean, shout out, you know, to my family. I know y'all, the guys, you know, free the guys as well. And um, nah, that's it. All right. Appreciate you pulling up on us. Really, you took a flight out here. Appreciate you. No out. problem, man. I appreciate y'all. Of course, of course. Y'all know what's going on. It's Dream Factory. We have it down here. We got LaBoca on deck. Make sure y'all buy this shit. It's really good. I can't stop drinking it, man. For real. It's the new wave. Y'all here. It was Spud himself. Mm-hmm. I'll keep tuning in.